This is FX Medicine. I'm Andrew Whitfield Cook, and we're at the 2019 Medicinal Cannabis, sorry, forgive me, 2019 UIC Medicinal Cannabis Symposium. I'm here with Michael Stupman, and Michael's a, a patient, but he has a very interesting story. Michael, welcome. Thank you. Um, tell us a little bit about this story. You have done a, been involved in a lot of ologies. <laughs> yes, and studies, yes, and in, and in qualifications. True, but um, yeah, my own journey was uh, a bit of a surprise. You know, I've been studying cancer and helping people out with cancer for a long time. And then uh, when I got a spot on my forehead, a little red spot, I thought, I, that needs to be looked at. Uh, my GP took a sample and it came back as squamous cell carcinoma. It then grew very quickly and had to have plastic surgery to have it removed. But that seeded cancer into my left lymph nodes in my neck. And those guys, never mind what I understood of the different modalities I've learned over decades, still could be halted sometimes, but it kept growing. And um, to the extent where uh, it ate up most of my left neck here. And um, in the end, I resorted to medicinal cannabis, which was interesting because I didn't want to get into something that was supposedly illegal. And um, I researched, and another friend, doctor friend of mine researched who would be the best, what is the best product available in the world, and we discovered it. Found the importer in Australia, and uh, that was a circuitous route because um, the first stop for most people is like Nimbin, the hemp embassy, is saying, you know, where can I get this stuff? And then they were very cagey about it, but they gave me an email address, and I found the importer. And that gentleman you've spoken to today, or assist the importation, I should say. He's not yeah. doing anything like that, but you know, and um, I acquired product, and that changed everything. So I had a huge fungating tumor, nothing arrested it. I was given, you know, back in 14, six months to 12 months to live. So nothing arrested surgery, chemo? No, well, no, no, no. So what, because of my understanding of cancer, so I learned, I studied different people's lives, like Dr. Otto Warburg got the Nobel Prize for discovering the cause of all cancers, which is anaerobism, lack of oxygen, which is caused by acidic condition caused by toxins. So if you're going to, and a lot of oncologists aren't going to like what I say, but it doesn't matter. It's characteristic, <laughs> yeah, cancer, they, not a um, cause, yeah. You know, they, uh, generally if they want to prescribe a chemical therapy, like a chemotherapy, it's highly toxic. So that is not what you want to do for cancer. You know, the Johns Hopkins, Harvard Medical, Pacifica, all the major research centers in the world are now saying, if you hit it with chemotherapy, which is highly toxic, if you're lucky and it knocks off that cancer, all the surrounding cells and tissues become toxified and eventually it comes back within a month or a few years or whatever. So they, toxicity is not what you want for cancer. So I didn't want to go down the route of chemotherapy. They wanted to cut me open from here to here and across here, peel my skin back, take out my, all my glands, my lymph nodes, most of my tissue, cut through three nerves. One will affect your tongue, speak, the other one affects your shoulder, that one gives you general palsy here. And, uh, and if, you, uh, well, if you do that, it's a, it's a long operation, in hospital for two weeks, and then after five, six weeks, you come back to six weeks of radiation. And I asked the question, if I do all that, what's the shortest lifespan people have? Oh no, we talk about, so what's the shortest lifespan? Two months. Right. But our average is five years. Right. Okay, but what's it at six and seven and eight? Forget it, there's no survival. Yeah. So head and neck no cancers, data, yeah. no survival really. So I thought, no, I'm either gonna die or I'm gonna live. I'm not gonna go through it in a morbid way. Um, and I'm gonna do it in a way, because I've been helping people, I understand how to help myself. And it was very difficult, I couldn't. And in the end, I resorted to medicinal cannabis. And that huge fungating tumor, uh, which wasn't, you know, everybody said I was gonna die, uh, closed, uh, actually stopped uh, in its tracks after four months, four and a half months. And then the doctors wanted to do a skin graft because of a huge hole, and, um, and I refused that. So uh, you let it granulate? I had hypergranulated. It went, uh, it'd been bright red and closed up that they would say that if you do it naturally, it'll take three months, you'll have huge scarring, you won't be able to turn your head. So I, uh, I, I didn't think I was gonna have that, because all kinds of reasons. In uh, May the 9th, 2016, uh, that tumor had eaten to my carotid artery, 
which is one of the dangers I knew, and I was bleeding out. Mm. Race to emergency. Three emergency doctors looked at me. One was an ENT surgeon and said, we can't even operate in that your hole. We can actually see with a torch this cavern. And if we yell loud enough, it'll echo mm. right, this hole. And uh, the whole artery is corroded. And, and, you know, I've seen those photos. Yeah. They, were, they were nothing okay. less than confronting. They were, <laughs> okay. they were rather... Yeah. You talk about fungating. Yeah. They were certainly yeah. fungating. So, yeah. so over what period of time did you heal? And, and uh, what was your experience with medicinal cannabis okay. as so, in the benefit? Yeah. So four months of a fungating tumour, it then stopped spreading and it came back to the wound. The wound started to clean up. Then they wanted to do a skin graft. And the reason I mentioned hospital is that they put me on high dose of morphine, almost a lethal dose, to ease my passing, because I was going to be dead in minutes to hours. So I came out of hospital uh, with a huge addiction to morphine with a pump, driving it under my skin. And the morphine, getting rid of that, was actually harder than getting rid of the cancer. Right. So I didn't want to have the skin graft operation, because nobody in this country, and then, although Anita doesn't know what they're doing, they never had a patient on 520 milligrams of morphine. Right, and then giving you a general anaesthetic. Right. So I didn't want to do it. And uh, the doctor at the time, great doctor, said, look, Michael, you, you, if you don't do it, it's not going to heal up. Mm -hmm. It's going to take three months, huge scarring. You know, we know you've said, leave me alone, to over 28 oncologists that examined me over a two-year period and four specialist doctors, but this has got to happen. I said, no. I said, one, because of the, the amount of morphine I'm taking, and secondly, you're going to take it from my butt, aren't you? He said, yeah, two million pieces here. So if we were to do that operation, I said, I was a single man at the time, and I meet a lady in the future, and she kisses my neck, she's kissing my butt, I said to him, right? So I used a bit of humor because the doctors then relax a little bit. Right, so, okay, right. you know, you've told so many doctors, you're not going to do what you want. Go ahead, but you understand the consequences. But interestingly enough, in one month, that whole, that whole hole, hypergranulated and closed up to the scar that's there now. And uh, that's really strange for that to go that quick. That's actually quite dramatic. That yeah, well, actually, it's just about gone. I reckon in a year or gone. two, people are going to say it's nonsense. From well, the photos that, that you showed me, that's <laughs> nothing short of... Um, I don't like yeah. using the word miraculous, but that's, that's what the, extreme. The body can do. You know, it, it's, it's, people say, oh, it's medicinal cannabis. Actually, it's those endocannabinoid receptors being polished up and cleaned up and firing properly, bringing the body into homeostasis and to balance, allowing the body to heal itself. So that's what the body can do, given the right environment and the right nutrients. Did you only use it internally, or did you use any product no. topically? I would now use it topically in a spray. At that time, it was sublingually under the tongue, and that's the only way I used it. Now what I've learned over the years is I would put it in an amortizer and spray it on as well. And a different product or the same? The same product. Same product. It was still re recognised, still internationally recognised as the best manufacturer of CBD. And what sort of ratio product was it? Uh, so the CBD came from overseas, uh, but the THC was grown locally at the right strength. Oh, and you mixed them here? Didn't mix them. I right. acquired them here. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and... and uh, it's stupid, isn't it? It is. We've it's got to be so cautious about the actual words we use. Yeah, I acquired it here, right? But, and the thing about it was, there was a ratio almost, well, let's say 10 to 9. 10 CBD drops to 9 THC drops. It was a little bit less than that, right. but it was very thick. Yeah. So it would end up being about that ratio. So, and, and that's generally not a bad ratio, you know, one to one sometimes, depending on the condition, you know? And some people have fixed this with one drop of CBD for their pain because it's a great anti-inflammatory. Some are going to take, you know, a, a lot more. Some mm. are going to take THC, mm. depending on what's causing the issue. I would imagine that now that you've healed so well, um, you get regular checkups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's interesting you should say that because I was curious about, my GP says, your architecture there is all changed under the skin, Mark. Well, I said, okay, you know, do I have an operating carotid artery? Do I have my lymph nodes and things like that? So I had a scan uh, end of uh, 2017, and I asked radiologist, can you tell me if my lymph nodes, what's left? Python, yeah. And he said, no, it's all intact. Everything's intact. The artery's good, lymph nodes, everything's... Wow. And they were eaten away. So the body regenerated things that we didn't expect to be able to regenerate. And now our knowledge about every, every day, just about clinical trials are being done, and new knowledge is coming in about what the products do. So it's verifying all these antidotal or, you know, 
his uh, look evidence. Look at his anecdotal, but very powerful, you know? yeah. and, and, you know, that your story of healing is nothing less than spectacular, I've got to say. So, yeah. Thank thanks you. so much for joining us on FX Medicine today yeah. and sharing your story with us. That's yeah. absolutely remarkable. Thank, Thank you for the opportunity. Take care. Right. This is FX Medicine. I'm Andrew Whitfield-Cook.